Um, so welcome everyone uh, to this uh, online interview with our uh, UT alumnus and visionary uh, Sid Saibrande. Uh, Sid, welcome to this uh, interview and thank you for making time in your uh, very busy agenda to provide us with an insight about the current state of GitLab, US CEO and Forbes greatest minds of the pandemic and your link with the University of Twente. Uh, it's the thanks second for having time. Me. Yeah, great. And as, as I said, well, thanks again for, for being here. Um, it's the second time now that you are um, uh, providing us with, uh, with these insights uh, for the Young Alumni uh, Network Twente, um, a group of uh, young alumni who are focusing on uh, successes uh, from the University of Twente. Uh, but first, uh, let us start with uh, some uh, regular questions. First off, how are you doing? Doing well, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine too, thank you. Um, how did you experience uh, the last months uh, with GitLab uh, uh, entering the stock market? Yeah, we, um, we went public in October, so a few months ago, um, but... Uh... That was a, a great experience. It uh, was, uh, well, first of all, a bit of a, uh, it doesn't get any better as an entrepreneur, uh, going all the way from co-founding a company to taking it public. And I was fortunate enough to take it public with my, with my co-founder. And uh, I think it uh, will provide a lot of, and it is already providing a lot of visibility for GitLab as a company and a product. And that's helping us to, attract better people and, and, and get more visibility from customers and more interest. So it's been, uh, it's been a great experience. Well, sounds, sounds really interesting. Uh, so the, did your life change uh, after that? So how, how does your life look nowadays? It didn't change that much. Uh, I think the, the biggest part is that there's, um, yeah, and in your in your day job, you have more kind of investors. You, you certainly have a much broader investor base, so you, you spend a bit of more time there. Although I must say that so far it's been very manageable. And then in your in the private life, uh, there's more visibility on on uh, your net worth and things like that. So there's there's uh, that was a change as well. Yeah, and if if you compare your life now uh, with uh, the start of uh, GitLab, so in the first years, uh, can you tell us a bit, can you expand a bit on how, how your life changed uh, over time? Um, well, so the first year of GitLab, I um, was um, a consultant someplace else, and I was uh, making relatively good money, and I couldn't afford to invest too much in GitLab. I put $100,000 of my, my own money in GitLab in the beginning, but that would quickly ran out if I would quit my job. So I kept working. And then I, with kind of the work I did as a consultant, I paid for people to work on GitLab. First, Martin Jankowski, our first employee. So I was um, working on GitLab in the evenings and the weekends and, and trying to <laughs> generate income during the week. Well, that, that must be a tough job then, because um, you, you, you founded it in 2012. Uh, and did you have in mind that GitLab would become such a big uh, DevOps uh, platform? Yeah, uh, it wasn't too difficult of a job. I didn't have, still don't have any kids. So I, I had those evenings. I think uh, it was tougher for Dimitri. Uh, that first year, we weren't partnering yet, and he had to also work a full-time job. But he had to spend a lot more time outside of it trying to keep GitLab going. So I think he, he worked much harder those uh, first few years. And uh, so the second part of your question was? Um, well, did you have in mind that GitLab would become such a, such a big uh, community or such a big company? Uh, we, we thought that made sense. We thought that made sense. It's something you collaborate with. It's also something you can collaborate on that you can contribute to it. And, a developer platform should be open core, open source. Um, so we thought it would grow, but in those uh, first years, we didn't think it, we didn't know how big it would be even up to 2015 when we joined Y Combinator, we thought we'd be 50 people in five years and ended up being like more like 500 people. 
Yeah, because it was an explosive uh, growth that you went through in the in those nine years. Um, so, of course, because we are from the University of Twente, uh, I also want to ask you some questions about your studies here in uh, in Twente. Uh, how do you look back on your time here at the university? Well, very fondly, um, I. Uh came to the university and it was, um, I studied applied uh, physics um, the first year. And it was uh, very humbling because I wasn't very good at it, especially all the math uh, parts. And also I found someone selling uh, infrared receivers on the, the local marketplace. And I ended up selling those internationally for him. Uh, so it, it was really the entrepreneurial university. Um, for me, and I switched to management science. Uh, grown, grew a lot as a as a person, and uh, really enjoyed my my time there and the other people. Well, that's that's good to hear. Uh, I can confirm I had the, the same experience at the, at the university. Uh, looking backwards, uh, it's I had a very fun time there. Um, so, is there something at the university that you've learned or experienced, which is still useful uh, in your work at the moment? Well, uh, many, many things. Um, the, I think the, yeah, the entrepreneurial experience was great. Um, I also, with management science, you, you learn a lot about, or you learn a little about a lot of subjects, which is uh, freak, frequently comes in, in handy. And I um, I push myself to to grow as a as a person and socially as well, um, and I, I think that comes in handy every day. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, and are you still in touch with uh, with other alumni or with with or with other fellow students? Yeah, yeah, we keep in touch. I, I was back in the Netherlands for the holidays and. Uh, um, well, we had a Christmas dinner, for example, with a group of friends made at the university. Oh, how cool. And you, you met those at management studies during I the day? Made a few friends at management studies, but uh, also at, uh, uh, at a fraternity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also a great way to get new contacts, of course. Um, we also have some questions uh, from the uh, from the public and from the crowd, um, and uh, one of them is: How do you experience the competition between GitHub and GitLab, and what are specific things you take into account? Yeah, uh, well, it's super healthy to have uh, competition, and um, GitHub was earlier, um, and uh, we. Uh, our strengths are that we're um, open core. So our customers contribute to the platform. We get hundreds of contributions from our users and customers, and they really love the ability to modify it, to inspect it, but also kind of the, the pace of innovation that comes from that. Uh, a DevOps platform does everything from planning what you're going to make, to making it, to rolling it out, to monitoring the result. It's an enormous amount of functionality, and it's something in our view, better suited to a collaborative project where, where companies do that together. Um, and it's, uh, it's been great to kind of have such a strong community. The community around GitLab grew over time. So uh, there's a risk if you start a company that you drown out the community, but we've been able to grow it. Okay, yeah, because if I understand correctly, GitHub was taken over by Microsoft uh, a few years ago, and you are still GitLab, uh, your company on your own. That's correct. Yeah. That's, uh, and uh, so we're not, we're independent, we're not aligned to any cloud, um, and we can, uh, we can serve both like AWS, GCP, Azure, and other deployments. Yeah. Oh, that's great to hear. And if I understand correctly, uh, GitLab is built in an uh, open source model. Um, how do you take this to the to the stock market? Or how do you make this public? Yeah, so 
investors are more and more comfortable with open open source models and our specific model is an open core model so some of the code in gitlab is open source it's free anybody can use it without paying some of the code is proprietary you have to have a subscription with us to use it but even that code is uh, on the internet anybody can download it and anybody can suggest a modification to it and apparently uh, investors are interested uh, in this uh, open core uh, idea yeah the uh, the proprietary part of it the part where you charge money it's, it feels like a very conventional software company and um, it's it's proven now that uh, being open core really helps with pace of innovation and distribution and it's it's a it can be a huge tailwind for companies interesting um now uh, another question um is uh, also um linked to what how i introduced you uh, you were marked uh, by Forbes as the greatest minds of the pandemic uh, because of your view on remote working. So how did you turn remote working in such a success? Yeah, when we when we got started with the company and, and decided to be all remote, uh, investors were pretty skeptical. So we, we did a lot of, um, there was a lot of intention between how, on how we did that. Um, I think the pandemic shown that it's relatively easy to all work remote. Um, I think what is really important is that you facilitate informal communication. And otherwise, like it works fine working remote for a week, but if you don't facilitate informal communication, it, it feels lonely. It, there's a lack of trust and connection. And we've written a lot about how to facilitate that. And what was your approach uh, on it, the informal communication? Because some companies, of course, organize, um, let's say, some, a drink on a Friday afternoon, uh, as they did before, uh, only then online. Um, how does it look at GitLab, the informal communication? Yeah, there's lots of different tips, and it's too much to all mention <laughs> in the call, but I, I encourage people to, for example, Google GitLab informal communication, and you'll find a lot of uh, things you've written about it. There's also a great ebook we've published. Uh, but for example, you, you want to replace those chance encounters where you just chat with someone for 20 minutes. At GitLab, we make it very normal to book 25 minutes on someone's calendar. Just say, I'm going to have a coffee chat with you. You don't need to say why you picked that person. You don't need an agenda. It can, you can chat about work or life outside of work. And we want to make that normal because it feels a bit strange in the beginning but if you join us we'll make you do five of them to get over that hump and to start understanding you know that's a normal thing and you can you can just do that and there's uh, 20 more examples of ways you can facilitate informal communication in a remote setting okay that's an interesting take uh, on the uh, on the management of course uh, of, a, of a company um Another question that uh, came up was, um, how does increasing everyone's income via the global income coin help with tackling income inequality? Is a dollar per day sufficient for that? Um, well, first I should clarify. So global income coin I do, uh, is, is something I, uh, I, I, I donate to. I'm, I'm a, a donor to that project. I think it's a, it's a great initiative. Um, the goal is to get people a dollar a day. A dollar a day is not even enough to address extreme poverty. The extreme poverty th threshold is uh, $1.82 a day, I think, right now. But um, it's, more, it's more than nothing. So like, you, you, you'd cover like half of the extreme poverty threshold. And you can, you can ask yourself whether that's enough for a person to, to live on. Like it should probably be more. But it's... it's 30 bucks a month, like it's, it's, it will pay for, it will pay for Netflix. Um, now the, the goal is not to pay people Netflix, a subscription, but it's money that otherwise would go uh, elsewhere. Um, so we think it's great if it goes to people directly. So it's a good step towards, uh, tackling income, uh, inequality. Yes. Uh, every every bit helps and it's a dollar a day but it's a trillion dollars a year it's it's uh, 
it doesn't that's solve, a lot of money it doesn't solve the problem but it, it, it is hopefully uh, uh, the right direction a step in the right direction mm -hmm. and uh, how do you make sure that uh, this global income coin is adopted uh, worldwide yeah um we hope that kind of uh, the lower the income of people is the more incentive they have to kind of sign up for the dollar a day and uh, we're working the plan is to work with local uh, exchanges so local kind of uh, crypto exchanges to make make it uh, make it possible for people to uh, sign up so that we can offer that worldwide mm. Okay, and why do you think that, that crypto is then the right approach for the global income coin vision? So the only and the, the dollar they has to come from somewhere, and mm -hmm. um, the idea is that it comes from seniorage, the, the 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 printing of money due to economic growth and inflation. But that's only worth something if it's something that is is used by people. So. The idea is to launch a cryptocurrency that kind of pays you for signing up for it, for, for, for using it. And then the seniorage can go to the people directly. Yeah, like that, because crypto is a quite a complex world for some people. Um... Yeah, for, for sure. So that, that hopefully uh, the idea is to work with exchanges who make it easier for people to do that. Like I don't, I don't think people are all going to run their own Bitcoin wallet. I think for, <laughs> for major parts of the world, it's just going to be linked to your phone number. You can sign up um, via via your phone number, and and that's 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 how you use it. Uh, so, I think crypto is a great backend, and I think the front end should be way more user friendly. And I think exchanges will play a huge role in that. Okay, well. Um... Sid, I uh, get a message that we have to uh, finish up the uh, the interview. So uh, I want to uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the whole University of Twente and on behalf of the Young Alumni Network Twente uh, for your time, um, for answering uh, our questions and give us a an insight in uh, GitLab. Um, we wish you all the best, of course, and we hope to see you soon again at the University of Twente. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Bye-bye.